Hey, John and Mike, BrewDashJuice.com. Today we are drinking stout, and it's not stout that someone sent us, it's a stout that I brewed myself. Now, let's talk about the story of why I came to brew this stout. Uh, a guy named Brian works for this company, Lana Coffee Company, and uh, he wrote to us and said, hey, I'd like to send you a bag of our coffee. They're a, they're a very interesting company. They help, they help out the uh, farmers of these beans. Um, if you want to check them out, they have a website, lanacoffeeco.com. And uh, we were talking over the old email, and he said, hey, I'll send you a bag of coffee. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what am I going to do with coffee? I run a homebrew blog. And then I said, hey, yeah, maybe I'll brew a coffee stout with these things. And so I asked for their house, um, their house blend. Uh, it's a, kind of a medium roast, and we'll talk about some of the flavors that they describe here on the bag in just a bit. So, sent me a bag, and then I started to research because I had never brewed a coffee stout before. I had never brewed with coffee before. It was always one of these things that seemed interesting. I just never got around to doing. Um, and I just, I've had coffee beers before, and I've, I don't know if I've liked them all that much, to be honest. But I thought I'd give it a shot. This is a, an interesting impetus to, to do that. So. Um, I took his bag of coffee and I did some research and uh, created a recipe. So I made a four gallon batch. <laughs> I, I put a recipe together for a four gallon batch because I didn't know how it was going to turn out and I didn't want to have to pour five gallons down the sink. So I did translate for a five gallon recipe and here are the, um, the measurements for your grain bill. If you want to brew this at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, 13 and 3 quarter pounds of Maris Otter Pale Malt, uh, 20 ounces or uh, 1.25 pounds of roasted barley, 1.25 pounds of old fashioned oats, this is, I mashed those oats, 1.25 pounds of chocolate malt, and 1.25 pounds of white wheat malt. There's a lot of uh, what would you say foam positive yes. grains in this grain bill because I did read and I just know this for a fact that coffee brings oil to the beer the party and we want to make sure we have a nice head so I did get oats and, and white wheat in there I thought that would cover my uh, my basis when it came to actual head um, formation so that's what I got here in terms of the uh, hop bill, it's just two ounces of Fuggle hops at 45 minutes to go in the boil. Just want to throw in there so we have hops in the mix so we can make beer. And then uh, did a two week fermentation at uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit with uh, two packets of Safe Ale Dry Yeast, that's the English Ale Strain. Uh, the mash was for 60 minutes at 154 degrees Fahrenheit and I boiled for 60 minutes. Now. Um, with that, uh, <laughs> after the fermentation was done, I started giving this thing a taste. And I forgot to say that at flame out, I put 1.5 coarsely ground coffee beans into the wort. Uh, I waited until the, uh, the wort chilled down to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit, threw the beans in there, all chopped up, and then just let it sit there for a little bit chilled and then racked it to my fermenter and let it uh, ferment for two weeks. Now, when I started tasting it after that fermentation, um, <laughs> that coffee flavor was strong and I didn't particularly like it. And I thought to myself, well, I need more inspiration. The uh, house roast here, they described the flavors as a balanced roast with vanilla undertones and a lingering hazelnut finish. So I thought to myself, hey, I have a vanilla bean that I've used in uh, past brews. Um, well, I haven't used it. I had like three of them and I had one left. And so I used that one last vanilla bean and put that into a secondary fermenter, racked the, the beer from the primary to the fermenter, the, the secondary fermenter, and then let it sit there for three more weeks and uh, put that beer into a keg. And that's what we have here in front of us, Michael. So what do you think of that? Well, sir, <laughs> tell in the, me. In the interest of full disclosure for the good people at yes, home, yes. coffee and me don't really run in the same circles. Don't mix, no, no. I'm not a coffee drinker. I never have been. I've, I've tried to be, 
Um, but I'm not. <laughs> I aspire um, to be. In fact, when I coffee. smell this for the first time, yep. it is really potent coffee. I mean, almost knock me over coffee smell. But it's actually nice. Like, I mean, I don't like the coffee aroma, but I can tell that the... It's just got a unique coffee aroma. Yep. I almost get like a... Like a... Um, Baked pretzel aroma out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got caught that. It's yeah. tremendous. That's um, cool. So the beer itself, I was pleasantly surprised when I first smelt the beer that the coffee aroma wasn't overpowering. There's a little bit of chocolate. There's a little bit of a nut thing, which you know maybe that's some of the hazelnut thing, but um, but it's got a really nice balanced chocolatey. There's a there's a malt sweetness in the aroma that's pretty good, and. Um, it's jet black. I mean, it's super black. I can't really even see much through the edges of the beer, mm. um, which is great. I mean, I think it's it's super sexy. The um, <laughs> the dark. The, I mean, the, the head is is doing well. Like the foaminess is great. Every time you swirl around, you still get good yeah. head there. Yeah, yeah. The flavor. So it's interesting that you talk about the coffee maybe um, a little bit bitter, and you threw some vanilla bean in there. At one point when you were talking, before you talked about the vanilla bean, I thought once it warmed up a little bit, I was getting some of that aroma, and I thought there's like a chocolate and like a marshmallow right. thing going on there. And that is definitely the vanilla coming through. And mm. and if it's the bean and some aspect of the coffee coming Could together be. really nice, it's Could amazing. Be. But um, the mm. vanilla bean is really making the whole thing sing. And it's really found a good fusion between the stout and whatever. And I think the base stout is tremendous. It's not overly roasty. It's nicely chocolatey. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that there's no crystal or caramel malt in there whatsoever. Nope. It's, a, it's basically a dry stout with oats and wheat in it. Um, but the sweetness is probably coming from the yeast character there, maybe a little bit of the coffee. Yeah. The vanilla is probably tricking my mind a little bit to think sweetness because we're used to experiencing vanilla in sweet things like candy and stuff. And so <laughs> your cream, mind yeah, is trying yeah. to tell you, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's sweet. Um, <laughs> but it's tremendous. It's super smooth. It's got a good medium to high body but it's yeah. not too big of a body um for a first try at, at the the this coming up with the stout recipe and then yeah. adding the coffee to it and then rescuing it with the vanilla bean <laughs> yeah because i think if i brought it over like if i kegged it after two weeks you'd be like oh this is garbage <laughs> so the one thing the one thing about coffee beer is that uh really get me is i have memories of the distant past of like smelling like my grandparents making perk coffee mm. or um college roommates making um what's the coffee that's like just the crystals they dissolve it's like a oh instant coffee yeah so, so they smells like just Ugh. coffee uh that's really bad. filter like just yeah. bad coffee in a coffee filter yeah. and a lot of coffee beers are thin and they just taste like like just coffee bag mm. like mm. second runnings of coffee beans almost this is not this is really rich yeah and smooth so the only thing i and like so the other plan that i had was so from the old text that i read about adding coffee to your beer and this kind of jived with the coffee snobs that i know and you know too oh, uh, those guys <laughs> those guys so i just i looked at a few recipes and i decided i was going to go with you know a small amount of coffee like uh, a, a pound, I'm sorry, an ounce and a half a pound. Uh, an ounce and a half of coffee. I coarsely grounded those. And, and like, uh, you know, when you make hot coffee at home, you're not supposed to use boiling water. Just, like, off the boil and then let it steep, like, in a French press, you know, for, a f you know, five minutes or so. And then you plunge that down, and it's tremendous. All the oils are, are, like, extracted from the hot water and stuff. And that's what I was trying to do with right after flame out like i wanted to be able to extract all the oils that mm. i would get from a small cup of coffee now my other thought was like it was it was either going down two paths or maybe three one was just to do that and see how that tasted if it wasn't enough coffee i would do a nice little cold brew i would uh you know get enough water to just do a cold brew for like six ounces of coffee and make coffee and then pour that in and then you know keg or bottle that up um, or, um, you know, maybe not do the, the, the hot side edition, uh, do it all like a cold brew at the end. But I just felt like that was going to be like way too weak. You know, I think that yeah. there's like something missing in cold brew coffee. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. 
still it's not, different. It's different. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know how it would play with this stout. I really wanted it to be like, this is a coffee stout. It, it was a little strong, and maybe it would have diminished over time, but I, I got freaked out, and I said, let's make this a coffee vanilla stout. And I'm happy with the results. I'm happy that I got inspiration from the bag. I thought I could like match some of the flavor descriptors that they have on the bag, and then just bring it to the next level by throwing a coffee bean into a secondary and seeing how that came out. So... That's what I got. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to put it into competition as a specialty beer. My thought was I'd show this off on camera and then ask the audience if they have coffee brewing tips. Like, put them in the comments below this video because I always want to learn more. And maybe I'll make uh, a different coffee stout next year um, when I'm brewing again with uh, stouts. Just This is definitely a wintertime beer. It's a... It's a, it's, it has 8% alcohol. The, uh, the starting gravity was uh, 1074. It ended at 1012. Definitely. Uh, that's a great attenuation. Yeah, too. attenuated very Holy nicely. Cow. With SO4. Man, yeah. That's amazing. Well, two packets, man. I put two okay. packets in that thing. Still. For four gallons. Yes. Just boom. Hit it. Um, so anyway, please leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, if you like what we're putting out there, please uh, subscribe, like the video. If you have a chance to click on that uh, thumbs up button. Um, but we look forward to hearing more from you if you have questions about this beer or any beer that we brew when you taste on, on the old YouTube. Uh, leave it in the comments below. All right. Regina Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.